Hello, our fine family o friends. Um, the, uh, the good folks that uh, escape Alaska uh, have, have commissioned us to build their Egyptian room. And, um, and we've gotten far enough along in the process now that we can show you some of it. Uh, they were generous enough to, to agree to let us film the, the build. So we're going to talk about the, the process of going through our, our wall texture. Our wall, uh, most of this is done in hieroglyphs. And uh, it is a many step process of tedium and, but it's pretty cool. This is a test panel that we did, um, and uh, you can start to see the carved detail in it. This is a stone texture over it, and, uh, and well, you can see the paint. Now, first, what we're doing, in fact, what I'll do is I'll go through different panels that'll show you different steps of the process. So that's our test panel. By the way, the, the stone color that we do is gonna be different from this. Uh, rose granite was one, of the, uh, was one of the stones that was used in the Great Pyramid, I believe, um, in the, the main chamber. Uh, but we're gonna go with, uh, I guess what you would think of as more stereotypically Egyptian, which is more of a, almost, almost this color or a, a yellower color. What we're doing first is we're doing just, we've, we've vectorized everything uh, Anna has spent days um, uh, vectorizing all of these carvings, and we are going in with our CNC machine and just basically doing a fairly shallow carve with the CNC machine. But then if you look at it, this is very machined and regular. And while, uh, while the Egyptian uh, ancient uh, artisans may have been very precise in their craft, it didn't really end up looking like that or not as we know it today. So <clears throat> what we are doing, is once that basic trace is done, we're going back in, I'll show you this one is pure glyphs. We're going back in and recarving everything with a, with a very small uh, Dremel tool die grinder and recarving all the stuff to make it look rough and hand chipped. So everything on this panel, and by the way, you're gonna see in the end how many of these panels there are. This covers uh, a large room. So we're going back in and hand carving all the glyphs, and then we're doing uh, voids in the stone where it's been eroded and stuff like that. This will then be, here's another one. So we have some figured panels as well. Uh, this is not what we consider a main figured panel. This will not be, this will not get figure painted as the next one I'll show you will. But so from this point, we'll do a, a stone paint job over this, just, just the base color of the stone uh, and that way, uh, all of our texture will have that same stone fleck to it. And then in the end, these figures like, uh, who's this? Uh, Horus. He's like, uh, he's like uh, Ra, but with a different hat. Um, the, the stone will pick up all of these carved details because that's obviously supposed to be unpainted stone as well. And then this whole figure will be painted in our little specialty Egyptian palette. So uh, here's some footage of carving. It should, should be 17 hours long, but uh, we're gonna compress that for you. So Harold is going to explain the painting process to you, or not, I guess he's not in the mood. The, uh, this is a multi-step process. We're doing these in batches because there are so many of them. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to prime them in a uh, sort of a, a, a brown mustard color. Um, and then I'll use my uh, carrageenan mix uh, speckled paint to go over that. That's like, uh, it's all... Uh, what is it, uh, class A fire rated material stuff. And then I'm gonna dust a little bit of a yellow on top of that and I'll show you some techniques for doing that stuff which are, I think, pretty interesting. What we're gonna do is use torn paper and lay those over the pieces when they're dry and then dust some color on um, uh, where, the, where, the, where the masking of the torn paper is not. The, the cool thing about torn paper is that it creates an irregular line 
uh, like you would find in the way slate cracks or flakes. And a lot of different sedimentary stones do the same thing, so it's a, a sedimentary stone technique. The carrageenan mix that I'm gonna use, I know everybody is gonna wanna know how I make that stuff. And the fact is, I've watched some videos on paper marbling on YouTube and, um, and look at, um, look at uh, carrageenan and how it's used in that way. Depending on the paint you're using, um, there are a million different ways to make this stuff. Uh, there's only one correct one, but it's going to change every time. It'll change the relative humidity changes it, everything else changes it, type of paint that you're mixing with it cha uh, changes it. Um, this one I mixed uh, four different colors or four different batches, encapsulated all of those, and then added yellow paint at the end because I wasn't happy with the color that it was drying. Uh, when it, it's, it goes on bluer than it is in the end. Uh, this is very long, so I'm just going to start showing you stuff. So all I'm doing with this coat is sealing the, uh, the MDF so I don't have open pores. That's always uh, the bane of MDF. And I'm going to do uh, fairly short bursts and fairly close because what I'm really trying to do is get into all these carved areas where it's actually really open. This, the sealed skin of the MDF isn't really that much of a problem. It's, uh, it's getting in there, that is. <laughs> I'm definitely holding my gun 90 degrees to the, to the target, and, uh, and I'll probably come back in and touch this up. Uh, you'll also notice if, anybody, any, if any of you use an airless sprayer, you'll realize that I'm spraying much closer than you would normally do it, and I'm, uh, my hand's moving a little bit faster than it normally would. Not much, just a bit, um, but. Part of the reason that I'm getting in close is that because the paint is trying to go into a little recess, if uh, what I need is I need the, the, the paint to have enough velocity that it comes out of the gun and sticks in there, and um, uh, if I'm further away, the uh, aerodynamically, uh, it's, uh, it's called the boundary layer, uh, the, the uh, dimples on a golf ball. Uh, the, paint, the, uh, the air doesn't really want to get down in the cracks, it just sort of wants to flow out. As soon as it, it feels a, a cushion of resistance from the, the paint coming out, it, uh, that, that'll keep it from going in. I don't know if this makes any sense to anybody who's not a pilot. So here's an insert shot of the fleck paint that I made that I'm about to put on uh, these panels. Uh, so I'm just going to use this hopper gun, and uh, this is a new hopper gun. It's leaking on me. Uh, I've got to I've got to figure this one out. I've got it dialed in pretty well, so this should be successful. Uh, but uh, this will have to take some tweaking. The reason you see me shooting this from both directions, if you're watching that whole thing, is because the carving, if I only shoot it from one direction, I'm going to have flex sticking to one side of each carved face and not both. So it's just an effort to try and get it in the cracks and make it look more like stone. The other thing, uh, the other thing that Matt just pointed out is that I'm coming in from the left and the right, not from the top and the bottom. I do have to spray the top and the bottom to, uh, to dress this, uh, this chipped edge here. But the reason I'm getting it to come in this way, or I'm shooting it from this way and this way, is that when, when a droplet hits, it spreads out that way. It literally stretches. And, and so each one of my little flecks is actually a little, uh, it's, it's, a little it's a little longer than it is tall. Um, so that way it looks like stratified rock that is laid naturally. If I did it vertically, then it's gonna have sort of a vertical stripe or tiny little stripes to it. So it's really about the orientation of the rock and which way it would be laid if it were actually being used architecturally for strength. So I know that's crazy, but that's us.
Step number 74. Um, what we're going to do is take uh, just regular craft paper and I've torn it into an irregular edge. And then what we're going to do is sort of like I've done here is we'll create a little temporary quickie mask that will create uh, sort of a jagged line. If you think about uh, the way that a piece of slate breaks, um, uh, it leaves this sort of line. And so I've actually done faux slate this way before, but it's good for any sedimentary rock. <clears throat> I'm just going to cut off a uh, sort of random amount. And for every, uh, for every torn edge, uh, I get two pieces out of it. That's it. And then I'll come back in and just dust this with a similar color and we'll get a slightly different texture between the two and it'll create that, uh, that break line. Now, what I'm looking for is a fairly subtle difference. So what I'm going to do is just mist this with color. It's, a, it's not that far off and it's actually our primer color. Um, but I'm looking for a subtle difference. I'm not, I don't want to paint this, okay? <laughs> So you can see this subtle little line, this crack line running through it where we have two different colored stones uh, obviously laid down during different epochs. Epochs? Epochs? I'm not really sure where I'm going with this. Anyway, it's subtle and it's cool and that's a thing, so yeah. And then uh, we will uh, we'll further enhance this by using workable fixatif, which is spelled F-I-X-A-T-I-F. And, um, and pounce bags, so basically that, or you could even use uh, chalk pastels, grind it up with a razor blade and, and, uh, and use that loose powder. Uh, one of the things, uh, the, um, uh, the pigments that we're using or the colors that we're using are sort of based on ancient stuff. Uh, we did that because it gives you the right color palette, it's the right look. Uh, uh, Viridian green, uh, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, Definitely cobalt blue. That's about as Egyptian as you can get. Red oxide is just a, it's a rust and iron oxide. Uh, so, um, so by using sort of ancient pigments uh, that uh, sort of by default, you get, the, you get the look you want. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things belongs. <laughs> um, the, um, uh oh, the, uh, the one in the middle has been hit with pounce bags. And this is a pounce bag. I'm going to show you how to use this. And uh, so uh, the, the actual painted sections of this one, and I, I, it's probably not showing up on camera, but it's actually, um, it's got a, the paint actually has a sheen to it. This is just thinned out acrylic paint. Uh, so what I'm going to do is knock that sheen off, give it a little bit of age with a pounce bag, and, uh, and then when we're done, we're going to spray a light coat of this stuff. It's called workable fixative on it. And what that'll do is basically uh, protect it, keep it from getting smudged or getting, having the, the talc and stuff, pigment, get uh, wiped off easily. So uh, this is not a sealer, but, uh, but it, it, it's... Um, uh, it basically makes it sort of archivable and hangs on to the pigment and stuff like that. So this should be a fairly dramatic difference. Harold, I love you, but you got to move. Um, is he in shot? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come here. Come here. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Harold's been dealt with. Not that way. Um, and... Uh, I am just going to, and you can see how that super vibrant um, color that it had, which is, which is not exactly appropriate, um, I thought you were dealt with. You want the pounce back? Now for doggies. So there are certain parts of this that I really don't want to touch, and that's the gold, because I don't want to lose the sheen from the gold. Um, but the rest of it, ah, the rest of it, I can just sort of dust this over it, 
and suddenly it looks all ancient and stuff. And I'm going to leave the scarab alone. And if I don't want this amount of, of uh, pigment on it, and I actually kind of think that's appropriate, uh, I can, I can uh, just uh, clean my hand off and wipe it off with my hand. It's that easy. So <clears throat> I'm going to do this guy over here as well. Just a little accent on that. And uh, by the way, what, one of the things that I'm not really telling you is that I am pouncing this, but not excessively. I'm, I'm just sort of, when you pounce it, it, it uh, dispenses, and then you just use the bag itself to sort of wipe what you've got around. And it is relatively easy. And then I'll also do it just randomly on the stone as well to tie everything together. That's already been done. That's it. And then uh, a light coat of this. Um, look this stuff up. It's interesting and it's, it's nice to have on hand. Um, so. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little presentation. Um, Harold says hi. And uh, if you can, if you haven't done it before, go ahead and subscribe and, and push the like button. If everybody pushes the like button, more people will see it. So that's always cool. Um, anyway, uh, goodbye from our new cabin. <laughs>